And I want to bring attention to a shadow that occurred when Jesus was here. Types and shadows, that's a biblical term. It is an event that took place, an account that happened, but it also will have a dual fulfillment. It'll happen again. And one of the things that is very, very vital to get a hold of is that the way that Jesus came to earth the first time is a similar way that he's going to come the second time. For example, it says in Luke, the kingdom of God does not come by observation, meaning that when the signs are happening, most people are not observing the signs. And we saw that in the first advent. They didn't get it. They thought that Jesus was going to come and overthrow the Roman government and set up his own kingdom, the righteous kingdom of God on earth. That's what they thought. So when Judas turned him in, Judas turned him in because he was more of a patriot and he wanted to see Rome overthrow. So he turned in Jesus. Now, when Jesus comes back, we also know that there will be an anti-Messiah. There will be an anti-Jesus, an anti-representative of the kingdom of heaven. In other words, he will be a Jesus of the earth, a Jesus of the ways of man. He will be a, a Jesus or an anti-Christ that places its trust in the arm of the flesh or in the riches of man, in gold and silver. So we know that there's going to be a counterfeit. But there's an event that occurred in Scripture when Jesus was going to get crucified. And there's something i got to bring to your attention, ladies and gentlemen. So if you have your Bible, turn to the book of Mark, chapter 15. Now in Mark 15, we read about when Jesus was arrested. And then he went through the trial, the illegal trial, all night long. He was flogged. He was scourged. They whipped him. They put the crown of thorns. They did all of that stuff to him. They mistreated him. And then in the morning, very early in the morning... The crowd had gathered, and then Pilate is talking to the crowd. And you guys know the, the story. You know the account. We all know it. And Pilate says to the crowd, Who do you want me to release to you? You folks remember that? And who did they say they wanted to be released? His name was Barabbas. Do you want me to give you Barabbas or Jesus? And in Mark 15, verse 7, look what it says, folks. And tell me that this does not match with something on today's news right now. And there was one named Barabbas, which lay bound with them, that had made an insurrection, and who committed murder in the insurrection. And they said they wanted Barabbas to be released. Now, who was Barabbas? Barabbas was a political prisoner who had tried to do an insurrection and overthrow the Roman government. And he had gathered a mob who followed him to do an insurrection. They followed him, and he was the ringleader. And when it happened, people died. And that's what verse 7 says, Mark 15, 7. He made an insurrection, and he committed murder. Look what God did for us right here. He's serving it for us on a platter for the church, the end-time church, to look at. And then to make note of, and then to process. Before Jesus was crucified, the people were offered, Do we let Jesus go, the one who is innocent, our Lord and Master? Or do we give you Barabbas who did an insurrection, who tried to solve the political problem by himself. Who do we release? And they said, give us Barabbas. When we look at the name Barabbas, we can break it down because the name Barabbas can actually be broken down Bar Abbas or Bar Abba, which means Bar means son of. So when we look at Barabbas, it's Bar Abbas, son of Abba. Or in other words, Abba means father or Papa, son of Papa. But what was his first name? What was his first name? Barabbas had a first name, folks. And there are some versions of the Bible who include his first name. They tell us his first name. And when we go to Blue Letter Bible, and by the way, this is found in Matthew twenty-seven seventeen. Some passages say it like this. And Pilate said to them, Whom do you wish that I release to you? Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Christ? In the early church, in the third century, 240 AD, there was a, a theologian named Origen who talked about this. And he said there are some copies, he understands, some copies of the, the canon do not have Jesus Barabbas, but some do. I want to say this, folks. Some of the translations have it and some don't. The ones that have it, the question needs to be asked, why do they have it? And then why was it taken out? And one of the theories is that the translators did not want that passage to have two Jesuses because the name Jesus only belongs to Messiah. So they took it out and they chose to do that. That's one of the explanations. Or there's another explanation that it was just inserted. But there are historians that say that that was Barabbas' first name. His name was Jesus. Now, I can't prove that. 
But it's interesting. This makes it more incredible as far as end time prophecy. Because now we have the governor, Pilate, offering, which Jesus do you want? Do you want Jesus Barabbas, the political insurrectionist, or Jesus the Christ? Who do you choose? Now, again, I'm not saying this as gospel, ladies and gentlemen, but I do find this interesting. But nevertheless, Barabbas means son of Papa or son of the father. So his name had a built-in spirituality to it. He loves God. He knew about the Torah. He knew about the temple and all that. He just wanted to do something good for the people, and that was to do an insurrection and overthrow the Roman government, which is the same thing that Trump is doing. Trump, he's on the news right now for his insurrection. So how interesting is it that once again, we have the choice. Who is the church going to choose? Trump, Barabbas, or Jesus the Christ? Which one is the church going to pick? And ladies and gentlemen, this right here, if we leave this part out about Jesus Barabbas, and we just look at what Mark tells us in verse 7, that Barabbas was in, involved in an insurrection, and he was let go, though, right before the crucifixion. Let's fast forward to the return of Jesus. Once again, we have Trump. People died during the insurrection. Trump is guilty of it. He incited it. And now we have the church protecting him. Now, ladies and gentlemen, this situation is dire. We are looking at the death of the United States of America. If some of you are Trump supporters, he doesn't care about you or your family or America. He only cares about himself. 